dude, do you remember where you came from? Then all of a sudden, they're crying bloody murder. Don't cry now. Don't be disrespectful. And again, these are courtesy conversations. But all of the negativity that people come from these other cultures and try to bring on us, we're saying no more. Foundational Black Americans just don't want no more of your negativity dumped on us. A lot of these different groups, they didn't cut each other's throat back home or wherever they're from. And then they come over here and try to do the same thing to us. And we're saying we are not having that. We've had enough. We've had enough of all of the negative influences dumped on us. Everything negative within their culture it gets dumped on us. We have to eat that. But all the positives, they make sure to separate that from us. We're not having it. If you're going to keep the positives, you got to keep the negative. We want you to own up, own up to your riffraffs. If you like to own up to your doctors and your lawyers and your PhDs, own up to the scammers, the liars and the criminals and the riffraffs. That's what we're saying. Let me get some folks in here. All right. Let me get some folks to chime in real quickly. All right. Let's get, um, we've got a lot of folks in here. Let me get Ain't No, the Church of Ogun. Let me get Church of Ogun in here. Let's get Pretty Grifted, or Gifted, Pretty Gifted. Church of Ogun, you in here? All right. Church of Ogun, where you at? Oh snap! Oh, I even know. Um, now, first of all, hey Tariq, bro, it's an honor to speak to you, man. You are literally the ancestor that put you in my life. You are my older brother, and yeah. I'm on my. I'm for real, man. I'm, I'm about to be rich in a few years, but that, that's besides the point. Besides the point. Um, the thing is this. Um, I just talked to some off code um tethers a few minutes ago. We started your shit, and and, and I told them because now I was not even aware of how much they how racist these people are. Do you think? Over here in FBA, we think that they're gonna be like um super gonna be like Malcolm X <laughs> coming from Africa with a dashiki yeah. and afro blowing in the wind or whatever the hell. And these people be like sound like some damn white supremacists from the south about monkeys and niggers and all right. baby daddies. I'm like, what? Yeah, no, right. That came as a complete shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of this wake this good though. I told him, I just told you this this um nah, this tether a little while ago. This is good. And she has a her profile picture is a clan hood. That's with Dashiki on it, like like Dashiki met a Dashiki clan hood. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me! And she's a non FBA tether. I said, you know what? This is good. This is actually good because you are making FBA stronger. Because we had no clue about this. We thought Tariq, Tariq right. I thought you was exaggerating. I was like, he was like, oh, there's some people right. in Africa that don't identify as being black. And I was like, yeah, get the hell out of here. How you be from Africa and not identify as black? How is that even possible? And we for not only do they not identify as black, they hate black people and they are like, oh, they are some white supremacist shit. And that is gonna that is gonna we need to spread that message around and wake up a lot of um FBAs because we had no clue like that. No talk, man. So I thank you yeah, enough. Thank you. Thank well, your phone is breaking up, brother, but thank you for the call, brother. Real talk. And this is what we've been talking about, family. Black listen, FBA family, you're not obligated to sit here and put on capes for people who sit here and look like you and call you all types of monkeys people darker than you talking about monkeys and apes and lazy and all that. That's crazy talk. We're not supposed to sit up here and be on some kumbaya with that. We got people from the motherland darker than us with all types of white supremacist pejorative terms for us and we're supposed to be on some let's hold hands on some kumbaya with that? No. We absolutely are not going to settle for that. We're not going to be on some kumbaya. And you don't even have to entertain these folks like that. The tether class. And I'm not talking about all the brothers and sisters who are riders. You do have some riders and brothers and sisters from the diaspora who are riders. You do. But when the riders come over and the riffraffs try to run in the door, we ain't got no obligation to be down with the riffraffs. We don't. Where's, um, who else we got in here? Let me get some more folks in here. Let me get a couple of more people in here. Um, let's get Poison Rican. All right. Poison Rican. 
if you can turn your microphone on, that would be great. All right. If you can turn your microphone on, that would be great. Pause and Rican. Raise your hand if you want to get on. All right. Pause and Rican. Let's get that phone going. And who does it look like we got? Uh-oh. Let's get this person here. Cohen Abdo. Let's get Cohen Abdo in here. Let's get Cohen Abdo in here. Turn your microphone on, Cohen Abdo. All right. With the green peppy frog in your, your profile, if you can turn your microphone on, that would be great. And then we got a couple of other people. Um, I'll add Jay while Cohen Abdo is wake, working on his microphone. Jay or Jai? Hello, Jai? Hello, John. Hello. What's up? What's going on, man? What's on your mind? Not much. Okay. Now, where you from, Jai? Jai? Okay, Jai, you okay over there, brother? Jai, you over there being sexually assaulted. If somebody's harming you, press two. Bro. bro okay. Bro. Okay, hold on. Jai, is, he sounds like he's delivering a Postmates order. Jai, call us back when you're done delivering the Chipotle, brother. All right, we're trying to I'll have a conversation. I was door dashing right now, actually. I was door dashing, my bad. Okay, there you go. So you good? You, you, you make your delivery? Yeah, I dropped it off. I just dropped it off. Huh? There you go. So what's on your mind, Jai? Never mind, man. I got to get back to the door. That shit, man. Stay safe. And, uh, uh, stay all right. Best, be man. good. Be good. Get get good tips, brother. Don't be out there too late. All right. Let's get some other folks in here. Let's get Afro Elite. I get Afro Elite up in here. Um, I get him. And listen, if you got DoorDash orders, knock your orders out before you call in. I know you try to multitask. You can't do everything at the same time. All right. Afro Elite, hop on, brother, if you can turn your microphone on. Sorry, can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. How are I'm you? I'm good. How are you, brother? Um, I'm good. What's up? Just real quick, I want to say, um, since we've been having these conversations about the separation, the ethnic separation between FBA and the other Africans from the diaspora, we get told we need to unify and about Pan-Africanism and Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X and how divisive that we're being. Every time we have a conversation about the necessary separation or just distinguish, distinguishing ourselves as a different group, but um, they don't have that same energy anytime a space is popped up straight up hating on us. Anytime a space, Real talk. Anytime a space is popped up. Yeah, exactly. Anytime a space is popped up where all they're doing is shitting on FBA and talking down on us, saying we're lazy, saying um, we're stupid. Saying, anytime they're shitting on us, you don't see the Pan-Africanists come up and defend us whatsoever. It's only when we exactly. say something. Exactly. And that's a great point. Thank you, brother. Brother hit a great point. I noticed that earlier. They get in these rooms and boy, it's all types of different pro pejorative terms about us. It's all we lazy, we're haters, we're jealous of them. It's crazy talk. And they do this all on Twitter space. They do this all on Clubhouse. And nobody's hopping in there talking about no pan-Africanism. Nobody's in there talking about how divisive that is. Not only that, when we call them out, what I don't like is when not only they don't call their, their own folks out, they come to us splaining trying to tell us how a kata ain't really a bad word and a bead it, is, it means something else and jarir that means this it's not really that bad they start splaining that's what white supremacists do how they try to cape for each other when we start calling out we start calling out white supremacists who come around us throwing up white supremacist hand signals. And then these so-called liberal allies start explaining, well, that's not really a white supremacist hand signal. It, it's a joke. It started out. It's just a joke. They play that game. No, we, we're not playing that game with y'all. 
No, if you don't check the tethers and check your folks, we'll check them. And now that we're checking them, people want to cry foul because now we're hitting them with reality. And they don't like the reality that we're hitting them with. Um, yo, the green frog guy, you want to speak? Speak, man. Yeah, first things first, how's everybody doing tonight? What's up, Cohen? Now, where, where are you from, Cohen? Shit, I'm from, uh, I, th- I guess you can see from my map, on my bio. And... But where are you from? Yemen. Yemen, yeah, okay. And I see you got you. You must be on one of those um, those four chan pages with those white supremacists because you're using those type of memes that they use, and that's a very interesting dynamic. No, to be honest, I just seen this meme on Twitter. I use it on other a revs. Is how you niggas be saying. <laughs> okay, yeah, you already sounding like you've been hanging with the white supremacists, sir. But yeah, the no, no, no. Tariq, whites disgust me. If I'm being honest with you. Whites no, they don't. Okay. Look at blacks. Okay. So black people discuss you, sir? Yeah, whites and blacks. Got it. And you sound like you're... What city are you in, sir? No, I'm in Yemen right now. You're not in Yemen right now. Where are you? I'm in Yemen. You're not in Yemen. I'm you're certainly, not. You're, no, you're not. Because the internet service wouldn't be that good. Where are you from? Where are you right now? Are you in Cleveland? I'm, Where I literally got about, all right, fuck you, man. I'm in Cali. you in California. There you go. Right, how long have you been in California? Uh, Two years. There you go. Um, Do you work for DoorDash or Postmates? Which one do you work for? No, I, I saw your people backwards. That's what I do. Okay. Yo, you're, the, you're the corny backwards guy who used the same corny backwood joke. Um, sitting online with corny troll jokes with the white supremacists. How's that working for your family back home? Uh, It's working quite well. No, it doesn't. Instead of sitting here with corny troll jokes with the white supremacists, why aren't you back fixing your homeland, sir? Why don't you do that? Okay. He's run out of troll material. Usually they're one-trick ponies. Okay, let's get this sister here on. All right. Okay, let's get her on. I don't know what your name is. You got the Haitian flag up, sis, so. Hey. Hey, how are you? Dear? I'm fine. My name is Tracy. And. Tracy? Hello. Tracy, how old are you? How old are you? I'm going to be 32 this year in September, actually. Okay, oh, you sound like a child. That's why I had to ask. Yeah. <laughs> What's on your mind? But, um, I just wanted to say thank you. You're one of the first documentaries that opened me up to FBA, even though that's not what it was back then. But I appreciate you. I thank you. And I am an information junkie times 10. And not so much that um, I need want to consume it because it's a lot of it's terrible but i need to because i'm bettering myself and i want to better my people as well but i wanted to say i am so frustrated with the africans from the diaspora not understanding what a foundational black american is or saying they don't know what it is no they know oh they they definitely know know. and not only that i would like every African from the diaspora, whether you're in Africa, anywhere in the world, to look at my picture in my Abbey and tell me where I am over in Africa. Where do I look like? I'm so tired of them ignoring our phenotype. We don't look like them no more. It's been over 500 years. And it's frustrating when you have people with degrees everywhere bashing people who just want to know things or want to have an open, more open mind about what it is to be black in America. I don't consider, mm-hmm. like, I'll call African people black, but the way I feel right now and the way I've been feeling, I just want them to see where I am on that continent. I want them to see where you are your phenotype is on that continent. That's all I want to say. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, beloved. 
Yeah, man, listen. What's what's interesting is we got people who are not FBA trying to tell us about our lineage. Like, how are you going to tell us about our lineage? You're not even from here. You're trying to tell us about our lineage that you know nothing about. It's a real interesting dynamic. But we have to understand, foundation of Black Americans, we've, we've allowed other groups to exploit us culturally, economically, and politically for years under the guise of us trying to be some type of melting pot community. And that can only go for so long. You just can't let people extrapolate things from you without you being replenished. And at this point, many of us are just saying, hey, enough is enough. And now when we have these spaces and conversations and we listen to some of these folks, because a lot of times, let's be clear, I want folks to understand these conversations that a lot of these non-FBA people are having where they just sit up and talk about us like dogs with the most blatant disrespect. These are not new conversations, family. Many of them, and I'm not talking about all, because I roll with a lot of brothers and sisters from the diaspora, from the Caribbean and Africa. I roll with a lot of them heavy. And so I, I roll with some real riders. But again, there's a sector there that has complete contempt for foundational Black Americans, and they've been sitting up online in these little message groups and chat rooms and uh, clubhouse and all of these other little spaces spewing vitriol about us for the longest. They've been talking like this. This is nothing new. I've been telling people about this for years. Now, a lot of you are finally getting to hear it yourselves, especially with places like Twitter space. You go in their rooms and just listen to how, when they're in rooms by themselves, listen to how they talk about foundational Black Americans. It sounds like Stormfront. They literally, they literally sound like white supremacists when they talk about us. They use the same white supremacist talking points, the same vitriol, the same hatred, the same pejorative terms. And a lot of us are confused, like, damn, I didn't know it was like that. Yeah, it's like that. That's why no real Pan-Africanism has really gone off. Now you see why. I've been telling people. And we've been telling people that Pan-Africanism thing ain't popping. Yeah, I know a lot of people, especially a lot of brothers and sisters in the so-called conscious community, they like to promote that Pan-Africanism thing. My thing is, the reason why a lot of people follow me, the reason why I get a big audience, because people know I'm not going to lie to them. And people value somebody being brutally honest with them, even if the truth hurts sometimes. And that's what people, that's kind of my niche. I'm, I'm just not going to lie to you. I'm going to just tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you how it is, and I'm going to tell you what the business is. And the reality is that Pan-Africanism thing, man, it ain't working. It ain't popping off. It's been one-sided. Man, the, the critical masses of other groups, they're not trying to click up with us to help us. That's the reality. It's all about them getting what they need to get. That's the long and short of it. There is no Wakanda. You go over there to these places, you good as a tourist, but they're not really opening the doors. Not for us to come over there in large numbers and do some real business, which is what we're supposed to be doing. They just ain't on that. And all of this whining and complaining they're doing is a smokescreen to get off the fact and to deflect from the fact is they're not trying to go there with this. That's what it is. They're not really trying to build a global black community. People want to come over here and eat off us. And y'all know it. Because that's what we see happening. If there was going to be a big pan-African movement where people over there in the diaspora wanted to really get it popping, they could have been done that. Let's stop playing. That could have happened a long time ago if they really wanted to happen. They don't want it to happen. They want to come over here and we do all the hard work and we take all the bumps and bruises and then everybody else eats off of it. That's the reality. And you know what? And there's no wrong with that. That's fine. If that's what you want to do, at least we need to know that. Y'all need to know that. The family needs to know that. And understand you're not obligated to let people keep eating off you and erasing your lineage 
foundation of black Americans, you have a very unique lineage. Everybody knows that, except most FBAs. FBA people really don't understand how unique your lineage is. And this is what people are waking up to now. They're finally waking up to it. Let's get some more folks in here. All right. And let's see. A lot of folks in here. Uh, okay. Okay. Some of these people I put you on and y'all didn't get on. Uh, let's get Brendan. And then we'll get Angel Kia. I know Angel wanted to get on the other day. And Brendan, you can get on, bro. And then we'll get... um. Tiga in here. We'll get Tiga in here after that. All right, so Brendan, turn your microphone on, buddy. How you doing, bro? Hey, Brendan, how are you? Good, man. How's your night going? I am good. Where are you from, Brendan? Uh, I'm from New York. Okay, so you are a white man, right? Yeah, I'm a white man. Okay, where, where's your family from, sir? Uh, we're from uh, Westchester, New York. Okay, where they where did they immigrate from? Uh, from Ireland and Italy. There you go. All right. So, what? Uh, um, how do you? What do you think about the conversations? Uh, it's interesting, man. I'm just listening in and uh, trying to figure it all out, man. Trying to find out the uh, the meaning of life. There you go. All right, man. Well, hope you're learning something in the room. Yeah, that's what I'm here for, man. I'm just soaking it up. I'm a sponge of information. There you go. All right, brother. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good night, man. Okay, let's get Angel, Miss Angel. Good evening. This is Angel from Central Florida. Hello. Hey, beloved. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, as a Floridian born and raised my whole life, I'm so excited um, about the new documentary that you're uh, working on right now. <clears throat> a little ashamed that being a Floridian that we haven't learned this information already, but yeah. um, I am excited to learn about this. I'm excited to teach my children. Uh, we've watched all of the hidden colors and I just support everything that you do. And I want to let you know that it's, it's, it's now we've had this conversation instinctively. When I look at people, when I see suspect stuff, I immediately go into Google and find out where they're from. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost a, it's, it's a habit now. I immediately find out if they are from here and nine times out of 10, when they say some such stuff, they're not from here. So exactly. it's, it's, it's an eye opener. Uh, we, this is our wake up call. This is our yep. FBA wake up call and we need to stick together and do what we need to do. But I, I support you and I cannot wait for this film to come out. Thank you so much. Thank you, beloved. All right. Shout out to Miss Angel. All right, let's get Tiga. Tiga or Tega? It's Tega. Tega, how are you, Tega? I'm doing okay. How are you doing? I'm good, sir. Now, where are you from originally? I'm Nigerian originally. There you go. Where are you living now, sir? I'm in New York right now. There you go. So what do you think about the conversation, sir? Well, it's pretty interesting, but I only got one question for you. Yes. Did you trade Mac to FBA? No, FBA is not a corporation. Somebody said it was a corporation. We trademarked the clothing. We had some FBA t-shirts and we had to trademark the t-shirts. And you have a lot of lying, scamming tethers talking about we turn FBA into a corporation, which we did not. So we got to be, this is what we're talking about. When we have people who are non-FBA deliberately spreading misinformation with all of that scamming and lying okay. that causes too much confusion and that's why we are differentiating ourselves from a lot of these liars and scammers because that's the problem okay another question so yes sir who, who gains who gains who has uh who has the profit of uh you know the trade match like you said like you, you have t-shirts and all that who, who has Who's, who goes, like, where does the profit go? Sir, the FBA shirts we made a couple of years ago, pretty much we sold most of them. We don't really sell them like that no more. So another thing is this blatant non-FBA pocket watching that y'all do. What's with you guys and all of this pocket watching, that, sir? I'm not, listen, this is like you said. Sir, I, I no, no, no. I asked you a question. What's with a lot of you non-FBA people with all of this weird pocket watching 
Why are you worried about the sale of a T-shirt that we don't even sell no more? We sold out of them a couple of years ago. Why are you concerned about the profits of a T-shirt? Sir. Turn your microphone on, Tiga. It's on. There you I go. I don't have to answer your question until you answer mine. Where you oh, no, yo, no, 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 no. You're going to, this is my space, brother. This is my space. So you're already coming in with contempt and disrespect. And you're asking bad faith questions because you're not really concerned about a t-shirt. You're just looking for an angle to show contempt and disrespect for foundational black Americans. And this isn't about you. Why are you censoring yourself in the conversation? You're just trying to find a way to make it about yourself, aren't you? So what's the color of your skin? What's the what? The color of your skin. Sir, why are you not back home fixing your homeland? Oh, over I here? Am fixing. I am doing oh, that. Oh, God. That's you don't understand. What are you doing, sir, in New York? What are you doing? My family is in New York. That's why I'm in New York. And to answer your question, I have a bunch of degrees back at home, but like America is, it's a land of opportunities. You come here, make money, develop down here as well, and at the same time, develop back home. Then That's why, the okay, so why do y'all spend most of your time, you, and not all, but you, people like yourself, uh-huh. whining about foundational black Americans and pocket watching us. Sir, if you're making all of this money, why are you whining and pocket watching about T-shirts that we that we used to sell? We don't even sell them instead of worrying about the shirtless people back home in your homeland. You worried about our T-shirts and you have people running around with no clothes. What do you mean? Dilapidated clothes. It's why you. are you? No, why, you uh, why are you? Not helping the people back in your homeland, sir. Why are you not helping? The people? You're you not. Think? You're you're on my you're on my live whining about foundation. I'm not whining. Yes, you are, right. sir. I'm not whining. You, you're, you're whining and pocket watching, and that's a major problem. Y'all have this thing, and I'm talking about the tether class. Not all of the brothers and sisters from Nigeria, because I I got some cats that I roll with very heavy from Nigeria. But the tether class, the ones who want to come over and undermine us, y'all have a real bug in your ass about us making money. Because when we got the museum, I, I raised a million dollars in a month. And what some of you guys, some, okay, some of you guys were the biggest haters about our museum. Y'all been sitting up whining and crying about our museum for the longest. And you know why? Where is the museum located? Where? Sir, it's going to be located in Los Angeles. We haven't gotten the property. For a million dollars? Yeah. What are you talking I about? I think it's going to be the museum for a million dollars, Harry. Because I'm going to put some of my own money in it, sir. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to use some of my own money. That's how that works. And when you say we, those FBA shirts, who did you sell it to? And how many people wear those shirts? And what did that money go into? You have and what? Okay, a quick question. Why does it What's matter wear a t shirt? Wait, wait, what? What? Why does that like, matter? Where's the t shirt? Can you send them? Why does it matter where the t shirts went? People who bought them, we sold it to them. We had them manufactured and we sold it to them. So, what's the point? Can you stop muting me? And let me just. You're, you're not going to. Well, you're not just going to babble. I kind of want order, and that's a problem. You left your homeland in shambles and in disorder. Here, we don't allow that. We have order here, sir. It's order and respect. Okay? And you have to get to the point, and you're not going to talk over me. We're going to have well, order. Now, okay. go ahead. What's the okay. location for the moon, sir? Okay, I've already said that. So what you're not going to do is just ask the same stuff over and over again. You're not going to do that because now you're babbling. And you're not going to sit here making bad faith arguments and questions. So we're not going to go there. Now, 
why are you not back home fixing your homeland? Because what you're trying you to do is not answer my question. You can just say Sir, that. why are you not back home fixing your homeland? It's insane in your homeland. And you're over here whining about our museum and what money we have instead of God. getting the finances in your homeland, sir. Dude, like I said, if you're not going to show proof, I don't have to show you proof either. So I'm. Well, why are you calling me? Why are you calling just to whine? I don't want to hear you whine. That's another thing. A lot of you non FBA dudes, y'all got this bug in your ass where you like to whine to other men. Foundational black American men generally don't do that. Y'all have this thing where y'all love whining to other men, especially black men. That's a very submissive characteristic, sir, that y'all need to stop doing. It's a very submissive characteristic and it's a very weak characteristic, sir. Okay. He, I think he got off here. I think he left. So again, this guy had that passive aggressive contempt for foundational black Americans because we're codified enough in order to generate income among ourselves. They got a real bug in their ass about that because you got a gazillion folks where they're from and they can't even get little things popping. And we are a small minority over here and we can get millions of dollars popping in a very short period of time because we're on code. So they like to undermine that type of codification. This is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. They get into this weird pocket watching type of thing. We should have been calling this anti-FBA contempt out a long time ago. Let me get some more folks up in here. Marcel, let me get you on in a second, brother. I see you, brother Marcel. Um... Let me see. Let's get Alicia in here. And let's be clear. A lot of these folks, again, they hop in our spaces in order to make themselves seem relevant because they know we're not thinking about them. We're not concerned about whatever they're doing, but they have to come in our spaces with all of this babble and pocket watching in order to seem relevant, which they are not to us like that. You're just not. Alicia, how are you? Alicia, turn your microphone on, ma'am. Alicia, let's give it a try. Alicia, where are you? Okay, Alicia, uh, while we're waiting on Alicia, we'll get our brother Marcel. We'll get Marcel on the microphone. Marcel. Hey, Tyreek. Hello, everyone. I'm Marcel here from South Carolina, and I'm just calling. I'm going to be very brief. I don't I always tell people, use the Cinderella standard. The Cinderella standard is if the shoe fits, wear it, and if the shoe fits, you can't wear it. So I don't understand why some of these immigrants get so upset when we have made it very clear. We're simply talking about the immigrants that are anti-Black American. And people want to talk about pan-Africanism and how we should support pan-Africanism. No group has been more of a pan-African. The one your microphone is on. Okay. Uh, uh, go ahead. No group has been more pan-African, historically speaking, than freedmen or foundational black Americans, whether it was supporting our brothers and sisters when the Italians were invading them, whether it was supporting our brothers and sisters, well, that was in Ethiopia, supporting our brothers and sisters in South Africa, supporting our brothers and sisters in Mozambique, or helping inspiring the first president of Ghana and Nigeria. So now we should, and we have the right to expect them our African um, brothers and sisters are immigrants here to support us as we seek reparations that this government owes us. And that's all I want to say. We've always been there and have passed our, our black cousins or brothers and sisters back in the African continent and other places of the diaspora. And now they owe us the same here in the United States of America. Real talk, man. 
real very eloquently put, brother. Thank you so much, brother Marcel. Greg, turn your microphone on, Greg. Let's get Greg in here. And there was a, a, a lady here that I wanted to have on, and she disappeared. I was going to give her the microphone. Greg, turn your microphone on if you would like to speak. All right. And while we're waiting on Greg, Greg is not turning that microphone on. Let's get some more folks in here. Um, yeah, the one. Let's get her back on. Lady, the one. Let's get you on. All right. Let's get the one on here. Hello, the one. Okay, she dropped out again. Okay, the one. Don't don't raise your hand if you do not want to speak, ma'am. All right, let's get some other people in here. We got um, Kitty Black. Okay, let's get Kitty Black in here. All right. Hello, Kitty Black. Okay, what's going on with you over there, Kitty Black? Uh, nothing much. Okay. Um, sounds like you're preoccupied right now, sir. So we'll we'll have you call a little bit later, okay? Okay. okay. And wipe the sheets down, sir, uh -huh. please. Right. Now let's get Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, sounds like Andrew Gillum's hotel room right there. So we don't know what's happening with that person. All right, let's try some other folks here. Okay, let's get um I think Wavy. Let's get Brother Wavy on here. Let's get Wavy. Let's get Wavy here. How you doing, Tariq? Hey, Wavy, how are you, brother? I'm doing good, man. And uh, I, I like the fact that you brought up the conversation about Pan-Africanism because, you know, I, I feel like, you know, Black Americans tend to be very supportive of, you know, other people who are melanated in, in a sense. And, you know, me being born in Haiti and coming into America, I feel like, you know, there was definitely an embrace there. But I also understand, um, you know, the, the struggle on the other end where it's like the same acceptance isn't reflected. Like there's, you know, different cultural views. And I'm just wondering, what's your take on how do we kind of create more unity within the melanated culture? Because we seem to be dividing ourselves at this stage and point. I'm just I'm just wondering, like, what what would be an idea for, you know, more peace, understanding and love amongst each other. I, I don't know if this is like just Willie Lynch going crazy where we have such a uh, difficulty, you know, meeting at the same table. What, what's your take on that? Yeah. You know what it is, man. In, in the, in the diaspora, the problem is because again, we as foundational black Americans, man, we can't do anymore. We've done enough in order to push a so-called pan-African agenda. We've done the most. We've been doing all the heavy lifting up until this point. And a lot of people from the diaspora, unfortunately, not all, but too many, they bring the same tribalisms and divisiveness that they left in their homeland. They bring that over here to us. And we're saying, hey, we can't have that type of thing because we can't be undermined like that. So the reality is a lot of these folks back in their homeland, they have to get rid of that tribalism and all of those ethnic differences that divide them and allow them to be conquered by small groups of whites and Asian people. That's the long and short of it. And we can't keep fighting that battle for them. See, we fight that over here as foundational black Americans. We're always fighting here, but we can't fight that over there for them. That's something that they have to get on code with over there and stop. That's the long and short of it. But thank you for the call, brother. That's the reality, family. The reality is what we're seeing when we see these people, these non-FBA people, all on Clubhouse, all in these chat rooms, talking crazy and disrespectful about us. Unfortunately, they do all that back in their homelands to each other. That divisive tribalism type of thing, it's rampant over there. That's why nothing really gets popping over there to the point where they have to come over here. And then they try to bring that same thing here. And we're saying, no, we can't. We just cannot have that. We're not going to deal with that. And foundational black Americans do not be ashamed to say, hey, I don't want to have a trash mentality dumped onto us. Don't dump your trash on us. Don't dump your riffraffs on us. Don't dump the pocket watching scammers on us. Don't dump that on us. We just don't want that on us. 
let me get some more folks in here. A lot of folks. Let's get um Layla. Leia. I think I know. All right. I think I had you on before, Leia. Layla. Or Layla. Hi, Brother Tariq. I am going to be I here speaking with you one more time. Yes. So this time I have to say I defer. I actually disagree with you. I agree with you a lot of things. As you know, I agree with you a lot of things that you say about Africans. Okay. But let me just correct you just a little bit. I am Somali, uh, Somali-American, I should say. I've been here mm -hmm. for 25 years. I am actually from a small um, nation, uh, used to be part of Somalia, but now it's called Somaliland. Yeah, it's the most democratic part of that part of the world. Um, tribalism is not the problem we have. The problem we have is nepotism. Those who are in power who actually want to only give, um, um, you know, their cousins or their family members. So basically, what we have is the corruption. Tribalism generally is not a bad thing. Actually, it works perfect if you practice it the right way, like our ancestors have. It's just, it's almost like insurance, having life life insurance, car insurance, but, house insurance, all crap. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But the nepotism is based on the tribes. It's based on I want this for my group because of my specific tribe and I'm not going to give it to that tribe over there. So the nepotism is still based in tribalism, ma'am. You see how that works? You are absolutely correct, Tariq. It's based on the tribe only with the corrupt mindset. If you are corrupt, you will be corrupt. So you will, you will actually utilize your tribe with nepotism. But in that's still tribalism, ma'am. You see, that's still tribalism. Not, see, not, we're trying to fix it and make it Not necessarily, else. because you could be actually African American and corrupt and still do the same thing and give um, preference to your family member rather than actually. But, but we don't do that, though. See, that's the thing. Who's, that's who's, the difference. Who say that? Who say that? There is a okay. corruption in Los Angeles. I used to live in Los Angeles. There is a corruption in Chicago. It's Chicago. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, hold on. No, no, no. Let me bring you back because you're, you're going all over the place. Foundational Black Americans, we usually don't sit here and say we're going to distribute resources just to Foundational Black Americans. We haven't done that. If we see a Black person, oh, that's a Black person. Let me help that Black person out. So let's stop you right there. Let's not create a narrative about Foundational Black Americans that's just completely false. We don't do that because historically, we don't differentiate ourselves really from other groups. We haven't done that. We help every single black person we see. Let's be very clear. Do you acknowledge that? Because I don't want to go all the way around the world here. Just okay, 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 okay. You, you, you are right on that. Let me correct myself. Okay. okay. So foundational black American. It's 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 a probably a new thing, a new movement that we are actually seeing. And I'm very open minded. I would love to see foundational black America be helped. Okay, beloved, I'm gonna get you on a little bit later because I don't want to have to. Okay, so I don't want to have to make this an FBA education moment, and we've had her on before. Okay, because I don't want to have to keep correcting narratives that's emphatically false. I don't want to do that. All right, much respect to her. I've I've had um, Layla on before, but yeah, when we start saying stuff like that, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to just sit here and keep correcting that. Okay, what's up, sincere? I see you, brother. Okay, yeah. Us foundational black Americans, we don't do that. Yeah, we don't do that. Yeah, tribalism. I, my dude Khalil, my, I mean, my dude Camille, the tribalism and tribonomics is the same thing. It's the same thing. See, they're trying to remix it to make it seem like it ain't really tribalism. It is tribalism. It's one tribal group being corrupt to another tribal group. That's tribalism. That's the exact definition of tribalism. You understand? It ain't nepotism. You, you, you're practicing nepotism for your particular tribe, which is tribalism. Don't let's try, don't try to remix something. And that's the problem. Everybody over there looks the same, and they're trying to extrapolate resources from each group and undermine every other group based on tribal differences. 
that is a problem in the diaspora, ladies and gentlemen. That's why they like to deflect and start pocket watching us and all of that, trying to pro project some type of corruption onto us. This weak, just like the guy who called earlier talking about, did we trademark FBA as a corporation? That's them trying to project some kind of scam onto us. You notice that? He kept trying to find an angle to project his scam mentality onto us. Foundational Black America is not a corporation. It's a lineage. There's no leader of Foundational Black Americans. How much money did y'all make from t-shirts? Eh, you're just trying to project a scam mentality. The same kind of scam, tribalistic mentality that left your homeland dilapidated. See, we got to watch people when they try to project. And that's why I wouldn't let him ramble and spew his projections. See, we have to have order. In these spaces, we bring order and clarity and truth to power. That's very important. Uh, okay, who we have here? Let's get um Sky. Let's get Sky on here. What's up, Sky? Peace. Peace, Flex. What's going on, man? What's going on, Sky? Hey, man. Hey, man. How are you, I sir? I can't complain, bro. I just wanted to say, I want to say I commented a couple couple of months ago saying that the real, the real reason they got that bug in the ass is that foundational part. It was all cool. We were just black Americans. No homes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But the foundational part is really what well, you know what I'm saying? Got the bug in the ass. That's about it. My let you say. Yeah, there you Thank you, brother. Yeah, that's the thing. When we start label, and this is the real problem. People, they got this problem with foundational black Americans, us distinguishing ourselves because we're using the word foundational. So now you've excluded a lot of people. And there's such a sense of entitlement with all of these other groups. They've been used to eating off us so long. It's like, okay. Why, why do we need to stop eating off you now? Like, no, because I'm, you've eaten enough. I got to replenish myself. My group has to be replenished. You just can't keep eating off me. But why? I've been doing it for the last 50 years. Why, why I got to stop now? Why are you being divisive? You know, that, that sounds like an abusive spouse. Yeah, I've been eating off you and using you and disrespecting the house and undermining you this long. Why, why should I stop now? That's literally the, the argument that they have. They've been disrespecting us and exploiting us so long. Why stop now? Why be divisive now? When all they've done is divide themselves from us after they've gotten resources and disrespected us. We finally woke up and said, hey, enough is enough. We got to look out for foundational black Americans first because we've been caping for every other group too long. What's up? We have white man of color in here. Hey, Tariq. How's it going, man? What's going on, white man of color? Yeah, Very my... interesting. <laughs> Thank you. My name's kind of like a play on what you were saying. You know, when people claim that, like, people of color are all in unity and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, where, where are you from, brother? I'm from upstate New York. Okay. okay. Now, where's your, where did your family immigrate from? <laughs> my, my dad is a uh, Puerto Rican. Okay. What's your mom? My mom's Irish. Oh, okay. So, now, what do you think about the conversation? Oh, um, I'm just a big fan of your work. I didn't even mean to request to speak, actually. Oh, okay. All right. I will right, well, keep enjoying the broadcast, brother. Thank yeah, you so thanks. much. All right. Okay. Uh, an Irish Puerto Rican who just wanted to say hi. Okay. Now, Miss the lady, the one, Shawnee, I don't You keep requesting to get on, and then you, okay, Shawnee, let's try it again. Hello, Shawnee. Hello, Shawnee. Okay, you got your iPhone one working, Hello? Shawnee. Oh, yes, I, I can hear you, Shawnee. Well, Shawnee, let's get that phone game together, ma'am. Shawnee, you want to try one more time? Okay, Shawnee. Shawnee, you keep requesting and your phone is raggedy, ma'am. You have a very raggedy phone, Shawnee. So I would just say listen and don't request to get on. 
Okay. Let's get um pretty gifted in here. She was on earlier. Let's get pretty gifted on here. Pretty gifted. Hop on. Hello, Tariq. I've been a fan of yours for years. Thank um, you so much. Since Charm School, I was very young watching that show. But you taught yes. me a lot about men at a young age without having a father. So I appreciate yeah. you for, you know, being on that show. And I was too young to watch it. But I still appreciate mm -hmm. it because, you know, years later, you know, I've grown from that experience of men yeah. and what type of men they're out there. And I am, you know, African-American and I just am a huge fan of yours and you just keep it up. Thank you so much, beloved. Uh, more people in here. Uh, let's see. Ebony. Let's get Ebony in here. Let's get Ebony in here. Then we'll get Ibero. We'll get Ebero in here. I, I think that's how I pronounce his name. What's up, Ebony? Ebony. Ebony, you can turn your microphone on, ma'am. And while we're waiting on Ebony to turn her mic, there you go, Ebony. Ebony, unmute your mic. Ebony, you okay? Okay, Ebony, her prepaid minutes ran out. Okay, Ebony, you okay? Let's try it again, Ebony. While we're waiting on Ebony to add some more minutes to her phone, we'll get Hannah on here. Let's get Hannah. All right. All right, we're waiting on Hannah. Hannah? Okay, Hannah. There's, I hope it's a good one. I'm saying mm -hmm. hello. Oh, yeah. I, you had a lady earlier on, and, and, and you said you couldn't educate her. She's been there before, and you just, um, she had to leave the room. Um, uh, yeah, black Americans, and if we could have that kind of movement in Africa, I think uh, most of our problems would have been eradicated. Uh, I agree with you, there is tribalism, and uh, that is how things are going on here to make the matter worse. I think Ebony has her mic on, it's echoing. Oh, I can turn it off. I would... uh -oh. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, there is tribalism. That is absolutely true. And it's one of the fundamental things that is making Africa what it is today. And it's not moving forward. There's internal displacement. There's internal fights and these external forces that are utilizing on that and making most out of it. Uh, when you get... Oh. Uh, yes, go on. I, I was agreeing with you, ma'am. I was agreeing okay. with you. Okay. And when you get a bit further down, uh, when you come out of tribalism, within that tribalism, you go into clanism again. So yeah. it's even worse. And it's 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 headache. Uh, All right. Thank you so much, beloved. Um, thank you. I didn't want her to. She was kind of about to ramble. Ebony, how are you? Hannah was. Yes, good. hi, Tariq. I... Um, I've been listening to you for years, and hey. I just wanted to ask you a question. You've been on this topic and really pushing this topic for, a, a, I don't know, maybe it's been a couple of weeks now. Have you yeah. received one? Has anybody been able to tell you, tell you one benefit that we are able to receive by having? the borders open and having all of this, all the, all the, you know, the different groups coming over. Has anybody able, been able to give you one benefit that not one. FBA? Not, not, not a single benefit. And this is why all of the um, projection and talking in circles come from, because they cannot give a benefit and they know it. And this is where all of the, Hey, you guys are xenophobic. Hey, you guys don't like us. Hey, you guys be hating on us. Hey, you guys are jealous that we be getting degrees. So it becomes a whole bunch of um, throwing out a bunch of projections as a way to deflect from the real issue, which is we don't really benefit from it. That's the bottom line. And because, and because of that, I would just like, and I'll just get off after this, but if anyone, any of your listeners, if they can 
you know, call in and explain if they've changed their mind about this topic? Have, have they been able to realize this? I mean, being able to not give one benefit that I would think that would have an effect on how you feel about the subject matter, you know, like maybe someone's changed right. their mind. If anybody's changed their mind, I'd love to hear. Right. There you go. Thank you so I much. Thank Ebony. You. But yeah, the whole conversation and, and my brother Mel and some, some other brothers, they started a room a few weeks ago and they're just talking about the benefits of immigration period. And, you know, I got in the room and then a lot of folks followed me in the room and, you know, this conversation has been a hot topic for the last few weeks. And the initial question was, how do foundational black Americans benefit from immigration, period? Nobody was singling out any group. We we're just talking about immigration, period. How do we actually benefit from it? And then the hit dog holler mentality came in. Certain groups, certain tribes from the diaspora jumped in. And they centered themselves in the conversation like, "Ooh, you talking about me. Why are you hating on me? It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, somebody has a guilty conscience here. And then they made it all about themselves. And we keep asking them, what's the benefit? And for the last few weeks, all we've gotten is a lot of babbling and splaining. We've gotten a lot of babbling and splaining. But the big conversation is the elephant in the room is the tribalism that's in the diaspora. Everybody keeps deflecting from that. They don't want to go into that conversation because that's the real issue. All of the tribal differences from all of those different ethnic groups allows them to be dominated by very small groups of white supremacists and Asians over there. And they do not want to tackle that. That's the real issue. So all of this deflecting and making these rooms, they're talking about everything but except the problem back home. Notice all of these Twitter spaces, all of these clubhouse rooms where all of these non-FBA sit in here spewing anti-FBA venom about us. They talk about us day in and day out, spewing all types of vitriolic rhetoric about us. Notice I've never seen one of these rooms, not one, not a single room, of these folks from the diaspora talking about, hey, man, we got all these Asians over here taking over our resources. I ain't seen one room saying that. I have not seen one room saying, hey, there's a small group of white supremacists over in my homeland extrapolating all of the resources, all of our minerals, all of our wealth. What are we going to do about it? You never see that conversation. You understand? You got folks calling up here pocket watching foundational black Americans and you ain't pocket watching the Asians and white people over there taking all the oil, gold, diamond, silver, all of the cobalt. You're not pocket watching them, but you up here asking, what the, where's that museum, nigga? What did you do with all of that money, nigga? Really? That's a deflection. That is a major deflection. Y'all need to be pocket watching the folks over there that's really doing damage to you. What we're doing over here, that ain't, ain't got nothing to do with you. It's not hurting you. Has nothing to do with you. We're doing what we need to do over here, as we've always done. But the people that's bringing it to that ass over there, and we've been... I won't even get into some of the videos that we see coming out from all over there, where not only are there small groups of Asian folks taking all the resources, we've seen videos of small groups of Asian people smacking the people around, slapping them up, beating them with sticks. And we over here looking in disbelief. But then they come over here with the smoke for us, really? The only people that's really help you? That's why we're looking funny style, like, damn, is, is, is it like that, brother? Let me get some more folks in here. Let's let's chime in. Oh, who is this person here? Who is um blessed finesse? Let's get blessed finesse in here. Blessed finesse. All right. Blessed finesse. Yes, sir. What's up, brother? Um, what's up? Not much, doing, man. I've been in this work forever. I appreciate you. I actually didn't get woke until 2012 when I seen Hidden Colors. Ever since then, I've yeah. never looked back, bro. Um, and of course, it was more pan African world, it's all black everything. But now, these last three years with the ADOS movement, etc., uh, you know, I see what we got to do. 
moving forward. Right. I'm worried about me and my people uniting right now because we are the ones under right. attack in our country that we built for free and haven't gotten shit for. Um, these people are going to keep doing what they're doing to you. We got your back, bro. Uh, don't worry about it. Um, whether it's FBA, indigenous, aboriginal, black American, I don't give a damn. Y'all know who I'm talking about. We've been in this country hundreds of years together and we old and we're not going to let people wipe us out, Tariq. So I appreciate you keep doing the work. And I just want to leave the room with the, the just a few numbers because these people don't speak out of logic, Tariq. And that's my issue. Right. They are emotional and we are too, but we emotional with the logic. We have the reasoning. Right. And in 1965, it was only 0.87 black immigrants in this country. In 1985, it was 3%. Uh, two weeks ago, the Pew Research study came out. Now it's 21 percent black immigrants in this country. OK, mm -hmm. by 2060, it will be 63 percent black immigrants in the black population. They will outnumber us if we don't stop this now. And so while I'm worried about all immigration affecting us in a harmful way, uh, the blacks who look like us are being weaponized against us and they're willingly do it. So you keep doing this good work, brother. And we just can't, this ain't an emotional thing. We just got to use our minds. They already is yeah. erasing, replacing, and displacing us. So we got to be on our shit. And it's with love. So I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you for the call, sir. Man, let's get some more folks in here. A couple of more people in here. I'm not going to keep y'all too, too long, family. I'm not going to keep you too long. Um and I'm still out here in Atlanta. Let's get Brother Ibero. Ibero Willie Iduk. Let's get this brother in here. All right. Ibero, I think that's your name. Let's get him in. I can't pronounce your name, sir, but oh, I don't know. Ibero bounced. Okay. My brother had some Joel off that was burning on the stove. Tweety Montgomery, you want to come on in, dear? Hey, how you doing, Mr. Tyreek? How is everybody doing? Hey, Tweety, how are you, dear? I am blessed by the best, but it, it amazes me that I'm still tripping off of him worrying about how you making your money. So if he worrying about that, imagine us asking for reparations. That's what got them upset. Exactly. Exactly. And it amazes me that not now time have we said, ask or worry about what they're accumulating or sending back to their country work right. hours but that's all i wanted to say also i was the one on instagram telling you about virgil's gullah Geechee. but uh oh cool <laughs> but yes but that's all i wanted to say thank you beloved thank you so much Bye -bye. Uh, all right all right let's get a couple of more folks in here so we're, we're having a real conversation here we're chopping it up and again let's let's be very clear a lot of these folks who hop in these rooms um especially here on Twitter space every day you have a lot of these non FBAs making these rooms, just disrespecting foundational black Americans and being very open with it because it's always been there. So now they're like, hell the jig is up. They know we don't rock with them. So let's just be open. Let's stop pretending. Let's just be loud and proud with it now. And this has been going on for a long time and we cannot, have people come among us and undermine us. We simply cannot allow that to happen, especially people that we've been spending all of our time helping and fighting for and putting in political positions. You understand? We as a mass group, we're the ones who go out and vote for these policies that benefit them that don't benefit us. And then all of these dreamer programs, all of these things named after iconic foundational black Americans, like the dreamer program is named after Dr. King. And for them to send these folks among us, the Kamala Harris is among us who sit here and have vitriol towards foundational black Americans. That's just not going to cut it. That's not going to cut it. All right, let's get, um, all right, let's get a couple of people. We got, this guy here, he, I don't know where he's from. I think he's from India. Akrams. Let's get Akrams in here. Let's get him in and see what he has to say. Akrams. You can unmute your microphone, sir. All right. Akram, if you want to unmute your mic, unmute your microphone. When y'all come in here, I hope y'all have y'all phones together. 
They got to have your phones in order. You know, what was funny last night, guys, when we had, um, I was doing the live last night, the guy, the Biden sexual who called up, that dude, I knew something was up with him. I looked at his page. Y'all remember last night the Biden sexual called up caping for Biden. I looked at his page and he had a bunch of transgender porn on his page. So I knew something was going on with that guy. Yeah, that's why he didn't want to admit what was going on with him. All right, now, who we got on here? All right. Okay, Akram. Assalamu alaikum. Well, alaikum sir. How are you? Okay, Akram. Okay, brother. Okay, I'm from India. You're from India? Yes. Look, are you in India now? Because the, the reception is very bad. Akram? Brother, that reception is either the reception is bad or your phone is hella janky. He got off. Okay. Shout out to him. All right, let's get our sister Cup Kate on here. Cup Kate. Let's get Cup Kate on here. Cup Kate is thick as hell, by the way. And I say that with love. <laughs> What's up, Cupcake? Hi, Tariq. Much love from the 757. How are you doing? I'm good. Dear. I'm How doing are you? pretty well. Just wanted to briefly step in the room. And for one, I've been listening to you for about a decade. Kudos to you and what you're doing for the community. We love you so much in the 757. So I went on a date yes. with uh, a Jamaican who was actually raised in the Bronx and his parents were actually raised and came to the U.S. And he kind of pulled one of those lazy talking points with me. And I just shut it mm. down with one question. I said, OK, well, what are you guys doing? What are Caribbeans doing that foundational Black Americans are not doing and have not already done? And he could not answer the question. So I just want to thank Boom. you for being like this mentor for us. That way we're able to combat such hurtful and incorrect narratives that way. But here's the kicker. Absolutely. He then started to tell me about a scam he and his father did at the Sears warehouse flipping refrigerators. Well <laughs> That's another thing. These folks, they have every scam you can imagine. Absolutely. <laughs> they, they got scams on top of scams. I, I hear this all the time. There's some new scam that they got, but then they want to project some we're lazy and all. Man, stop. Right. Stop. Thank you so much. You have a great night, Tariq. Thank you, dear. Yeah, family, black, black family, FBA family. Don't ever, ever, ever let anybody get around you talking about FBAs are lazy. Don't ever, ever, ever let nobody fix their mouth to say that nonsense. See, that's why these people are butt hurt now. Because these people try to come in our spaces with all of that. Y'all are just lazy. Man, and we shut them down and then we remind them of what where they came from. And then they want to cry foul. Y'all not going to sit here projecting your vitriol towards us. None of these groups are doing nothing that we have not already done. Nobody. You're not doing anything we haven't done already. Nobody. You're not coming over here showing us anything. They are coming over here, getting with these white supremacists, and these white supremacists pump your head up, telling you, because they play on the tribal differences too. The white supremacists know how to get your, your ear. And say, oh, yeah, those, those black Americans, those FBAs, yeah, you work so much harder than them. Oh, yeah, I do, I do. They're running game on you. They tell you what you want to hear, run that game on you. Then y'all start coming with us with that. And then we remind you of what the real deal is. And then you say, oh, damn, y'all divisive. You hurt my feelings. None of these groups, let's be very clear. Don't come around us talking about somebody's lazy and how much better you're doing. You're not. You're, you're doing all right. You're not doing anything. Foundational Black Americans haven't been doing for the last hundred years. Most of the stuff that's in half this just that's invented here was invented by foundational black Americans. When you start peeling back the layers, family, and I done broke this down for Black History Month. All of the basic necessities that you're using, most likely a lot of it came from foundational black Americans. It was rooted in our ingenuity, ladies and gentlemen. We done been there, done that. Don't come over here talking about some degrees, family. We didn't ran schools, man. We y'all talking about stuff Booker T. Washington and them used to do a hundred years ago. You're Johnny come lately. Don't come here trying to flex. All right, let's just chill out. 
a lot of times we've been humoring people. We'll let you talk your talk. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're doing great. Just keep it up, buddy. But then it gets vitriolic. So now we have to gently remind you, okay, you're not doing anything we haven't done. You're not showing us anything. You're coming over. You're making a living for yourself. Make a living for yourself and keep our names out your mouth. Stop trying to stunt with your little Uber job. Stop it. Don't tell us about your degrees. We didn't done the degree thing. We got all types of degrees. Some of the first black people going to Ivy League schools, foundational black Americans do. We, we've done that. We're more into business things now, ownership, because we understand as foundational black Americans, it's important for us to own stuff. This is where we're trying to go with it. We're into ownership. That's what I'm all about. I'm all about ownership, owning and controlling the resources that we have and the systems that we have. So don't come around us trying to brag about stuff we didn't done a hundred years ago. Nobody's hating on you. That's why when people come in talking about why you hating on us, you have nothing to hate on, ma'am, sir. You you just have nothing for us to hate on. We've been there, done that. Let me get one more person in here. See, this is why we have to we have to understand the mindsets of everybody, so they don't ultimately come and undermine us. All right, let's get um. Ooh, there's got a lot of folks in here. Let's get Holadera. Holadera in here. Holadera, turn your microphone on. All right, then raise your hand. There's a lot of folks in here. We got Terry. Terry, what's up, sir? Y'all hear me? I can hear you, Holadera. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? Yes, Terry. I just wanted to agree with a lot of what you said. Uh, about mm-hmm. about a lot of the Africans just not being on code, and uh, yeah, and I, I I think I think you're right with, uh, you know what upsets me the the the, the slurs a lot of them be using. Mm-hmm. Now, where are you from, by the way? Where are you from? I hear an accent. My accent. Well, I I went to international school um, over in uh, Singapore, so. My parents were in the military. Okay, now where are you from, brother? My parents, my parents, my parents from North Carolina. Well, not with that accent. No, I didn't grow. No. I didn't grow up in the USA. I went international no, school. No, 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 no. School don't give you an accent. Your parents do. My, you don't have an accent because of school, brother. Tariq, international school means you go to international school. It's an American curriculum. Okay. I grew up in Singapore. You grew up in Singapore. Singapore, but my both my parents are, are foundational Black Americans. Sir, I, that's mm, that's an interesting dynamic. That's kind of you, your parents. Usually, you get the dialect of your parents. Your parents don't sound like you. You're not gonna. You would sound like your parents. You would sound like some people from North Carolina, no matter where you went. Listen, me for example. Listen. Listen, listen. I was born in Detroit. An international school means it's a boarding school that people do abroad uh, okay. oh, so, with an American so, curriculum. So I'm okay. trying to so you didn't so oh so you oh I see what you're saying. I got it. Okay, got okay. it. So your parents were in the military, so you were in the boarding school, so you were being taught by the people. So yeah, so we had an American curriculum. We were doing a lot. Okay, but we but yeah, I was I, I grew up. Okay, in I get, okay. Now, so you weren't really around your parents like that. No. But I got it. That makes sense. Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. Because I'm like, yeah, if you're around your parents, you're going to pick up their inflections as far as their voice. But I get what you're saying. You weren't around them. So I get it. I got it. Got it. How was it growing up in Singapore? Well, in Singapore, what we had, we had uh, it, Singapore's very, very strict. Um, so yeah. so what, what, what usually happens is people who are, are pimps and who leave school at in, in high school, they usually put what do they do? So, so your parents were pimps. What what happened, sir? What happened, Holodero? What, what, what happened? What happened? So in Singapore, no. What happened? Oh, you, got, you got pimped. What happened to you? What are you talking about? No, Singapore is very very strict. So anything like drugs. Oh, okay. So you're saying that you got pimped. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm saying you're a pimp. Oh, oh, okay. So you're fantasizing about being a hoe. So, sir, don't don't call up fantasizing about being a hoe. I don't want you to be my hoe. You got to be a man, brother. 
you're fantasizing about selling Bucci Cat. Oh, he got out of here. See? Yeah, he wasn't no FBA. That dude wasn't FBA. This is a, one of these submissive tethers fantasizing about selling Bucci Cat. Don't call me with your fantasies about being a hoe. I don't want to send you to the track. Calm down. These dudes have been so defeated over there in their homelands. All they know is submitting to another man. Don't call me trying to submit. I don't want you, brother. I want you to stand up, get off your stomach, my brother, and put your booty down. Don't call me with that. This ain't that kind of party. Foundation of Black American men, we stand up. We don't lay on our stomachs for white mommy and Asian daddy. All right. Let's get some more people in here. All right. Okay, what's up? I see you, Sin. Let me get Sincere, Brother Sincere in here. Shout out to Brother Sincere. Hey. What's going on with it, player? Yeah, I'm on, so I want to say something to add to the conversation, but I wanted to ask you real quick. Um, while you're down here, you think you're going to be able to do a book signing with a Nubian bookstore? No, 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 no. I, I won't have time for that. Yeah, because we're out here filming. So, yeah, I won't have time for that. All right, cool. So, yeah, what I wanted to say was to some of the non-FBA people that sound like y'all might be pretty cool or whatever, which I got to stop doing. Yeah. Y'all got to stop coming in these spaces, making it seem like this is a two-way thing. You know, can, can right. we all just get along and all of that stuff? Y'all got to stop that. And what y'all need to do is just start checking your family members and your tribe members. Yeah, exactly. Real talk. Thank you for the call, brother. Sure. All right. Let's get, um, who else we got here? Y'all raise your hand if you want to get on. Who is this? Where's this flag from? Okay. Let's get this person in here. With a foreign flag. I don't know where this flag is from. M2. I don't know where that flag is from. But hop on into um, It's a German flag. It's well known. I don't see how you would have known that. Um, I, I don't really look at Germany like that. So that's why I didn't know. Because I don't care. But what's going on? What's on your mind? Yeah. So, you know, I've spoken to you before. You know, it just. I don't remember you. Are you from Germany? Yeah, I'm from Germany. You know, I live in America, though. Got it. Got it. So when did you immigrate here from Germany? I was approximately nine years old. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what's on your mind? What's on your mind? Uh, you know, I just, I feel like, you know, thank you for giving me the platform. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys, well, you, you know, you're a fraud. You know, you dupe all these. Oh, stop it. Okay. Don't call up projecting, sir. Don't call projecting. Stop it. Don't you call projecting and trolling. Trolling means that I'm right. So we're not going to let you troll. Let me stop ask, it. Sir. Let me ask him then. Instead of. Calm, calm down. Don't, don't, don't. This is not corny troll hour. You're not going to call up trolling with cornball nonsense. Now, what's on your mind? Let's talk real. Let's, let's man up and let's talk real. Don't be a hoe. Go ahead. Okay. So what are you doing for the black community? Literally. Sir, you, are, you a, are you a white or German person? I got a question. I just asked the question, man. Okay. Because you don't sound like a white person. You sound like uh, a tether who's trying to sound white. You don't sound white. You're not white, are you? Yeah, I'm from Germany. I'm white. Are you white from Germany? Okay. But you live out here in the States. Now. Yeah, I've been here since I was nine. Since you were nine years old. Okay. Are you the white dude who be in those rooms trying to sound black? Are you that guy? No, nah, that's how I talk. I'm not even like. Oh, oh. Okay. I mean, grew up in African American neighborhoods, so you know. Oh, okay. yeah. so if you're from Germany, why is Germany so slummy? Germany is very slummy right now. You know that. A lot of AIDS out there in Germany. A lot of um, dilapidation in Germany. Germany is really not popping the way people think it is. I mean, I haven't lived there since I was nine. I don't really care. You know what I mean? Well, well, the thing is, you, you don't care about where you came from. How can you speak on what black people are doing over here? You don't give a damn about the place your family fled, fled from. Nah, I'm asking you a question personally. What are you doing for the black community? But no, sir, that's the problem. You're not qualified to ask me that because you fled from your homeland. You and your family. I didn't fled. flee. I was nine. How did I flee? You, you put on your little pro kids and you were running right with your mommy and daddy. That's how you fled. My, my mom and dad were over here. I was no. 
you, you fled. You you had on your little two T jogger suit, running your ass off, fleeing with the little with the little with the little lights with the little lights on the bottom of your shoes, running. That's how you fled, sir. Getting away from that slum ghetto in Germany. That's what you did, sir. You fled. Your family fled, and you were a little baby fleer. Well, yeah, turn your microphone on. So you're not qualified to ask me anything about Black America at all. I right, look out so for the Black community, sir. A few points I want to correct you on. Right, so right, what are you going to correct me on? Come on. Let's my, my parents are already here. Uh-huh. They, they fled before you. Germany with my grandparents. We didn't uh -huh. live in the slums. We lived in the Eiffel. You can Google it. Not Stop, the slums. It. Stop it. Fa family, listen to me. Google German slums. I didn't been to Germany, by the way. Germany. And let me, this is another thing that a lot of folks have to understand. Europe is full of slums. <laughs> Let's be clear. It ain't all popping in Europe. There's a bunch of slums all over Europe. And Germany has a big slum over there. You know, they come over here and try to front. There's a reason why they had to get the hell up out of there. But go ahead. I'm not from the slums. Though. That's the whole thing. I know. No, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so you got a German Wakanda over there. Yeah, 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 yeah. All of you come from German Wakanda. Every time you talk to somebody who fled, oh, I got a castle where I'm from. I live in Venerat, Germany. It's in the Eiffel. You can just Google it, man. Dude, you weren't living. You were not living. Far. There's no slums there. Sir, if it were not for Foundation of Black Americans, you'd be over there in the German ghetto eating some sauerkraut. Stop it. If it wasn't for Germans, you wouldn't be on this phone talking to me. Uh, how so? How? Uh, do your research, man. I'm not here to educate. Uh, how? How? What did Germans do? Do your research. But, but embarrass themselves with that damn Holocaust and become a shit stain on the history of Europe. What did they do besides embarrass themselves damn near indefinitely for that damn Holocaust they did? They're still reeling from that now. So what, what are you talking about? Get on, get on here and get this. Yeah. So you don't even, you don't even know what the German flag looks like. You couldn't even recognize it. Because uh, I don't give a damn. Even speak on a country, you don't even recognize the flag. Because I don't, give a fuck. I don't give a damn. I don't, I don't sit here memorizing everybody's flag in a place that I don't give a shit about. Why would I do that? All right. Can you just answer the question? What do you do? For Dude, I do more than you did for your homeland. I don't flee. That's what I do. I don't flee you, from my land, it's a, I'm not in competition with you. I'm just asking a question. You're damn sure right you ain't in competition because you fled and I didn't. I didn't flee, sir. You fled. So I was on. I didn't really flee. There was no crisis. Your parents, your parents your parents mom, my mom asked me to come back and live with her because she wanted to raise her. Because it wasn't popping back in your homeland. And you had to come over here to utilize your whiteness for something good, which is to get all the resources that Foundation of Black Americans built this country with sir not really yes yeah really yeah really because well, if you want to answer the question though it's like are you scared I, i've already said that i've already answered the question i have not I, what have you done dude i've done a lot for foundational black americans more than what you've done for your journey like points, points and then the benefits and results of your major <laughs> that you contributed excuse me what what now could you name like three major points and then the benefit and results of those okay. points? More than you, those three right there, more than you have done for your homeland. You sound like a scam artist in East Harlem. That's, that's you projecting, sir. That's you projecting your white supremacist mindset, sir. You're not answering the question. You're trying to make it a competition between me and you. I'm just a question. All you've done is project your white supremacist mindset. You had to come over here and join up with team white supremacy because white supremacy is a welfare system for losers who can't cut it on their own. And is that you, sir? No, nah, it's not me. That is you, sir. See, I'm a foundational black American. What did you do for the foundational black Americans? Everything. I do so much for my community. And you just name like three major points and then the results and share like facts. Sir, I don't have to do anything. You're here because you know my influence and what I've done. You know I've exactly. Yes, you've never you heard of you. No, yes, you have. Yes, sir. Yes, you have. You know exactly who I am. You know all of my accomplishments. You see all of these people in the room for a reason. They're here because I put in work and I do for my community. I help my community. I help educate my community. If you want to really get a get down on what I do, 
I funded almost every independent black school in this country. I funded many orphanages and villages in the motherland. I've done movies and films about the Haitian history, and my movies are shown in Haiti. I've done not stuff just for foundation of black Americans. I've helped black people globally. I have donated money to so many different groups and organizations. I've given water filters down there in, in Haiti to help the brothers and sisters there. I have my films and curriculums in schools all over this country. I help all types of um, disabled children I do all types of stuff that is very documented. Also, and, and hold on, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm, I'm giving you, I'm telling you my credentials. Yeah, these can you black, post the black, the black, these brothers and sisters out here, these activists, I've gotten so many people out of jail. I've bailed so many people out of jail. I've personally helped get people's charges dropped, people who've been killed and who've died. I've paid for families' funerals. I have done the most, sir. This is why I'm so well respected. Oh, because, receipts, because, like, because, because, okay, stop, 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 sir. Stop babbling your little mayonnaise and crusted lips, sir. I'm talking. You asked for my credentials and I'm giving them to you and now you're babbling, sir. So like I said, I just gave you all of my credentials. And on top of that, I've never fled like you and your family. You understand? So now it goes back to the question, why have you abandoned your homeland? And why don't you do the same for your homeland that I did for mine instead of abandoning your homeland and say the hell with them? I'm over here now. Ain't that kind of cowardly? Can you can you like post like three documentation? <laughs> Dude, who the hell are you to post documents for? Who are you? Because anyone could say anything. I just want you to show these people that you actually did what you said. Who the hell are you? It's not for me for these people in this room. They already know. Uh, a lot the of people them. in the room already know my get down. Who are you? Can to you have to show documents to back what you're saying? Because you know, who <laughs> are you, Mister Mayonnaise Man? Who are you? I'm Why would I have to show documents to you? You're a nobody and a troll. Listen, that's why they give out, you know, certificates. You are, you are nobody whining troll who's probably sitting in a trailer park eating a jelly sandwich right now. Who are you to pose for documents? House, but anyway. Why would I have to show you documents? What are you, you are nobody. Well, I don't know. Why, why would I do that for a nobody? That's why that's why documentation. No, make it make sense, though. What do I get out of showing documents to a nobody? To prove what you're saying is true and you're not just wrong. OK, OK. If I said what I was saying, even if it wasn't true, what you going to do about it? Well, you're just a fraud, man. Nothing. Exactly. Nothing but wine. See, so uh -huh. that's why I don't have to show you anything. You're a nobody. You're whining. You're in our space. You're in our, you're, you're in our space whining which is what a lot of you suspected white supremacists like to do because you know you're a loser and you see black people who have to earn everything the real way and you sit up getting the welfare system of white supremacy and you feel a certain way about that. You, you, you feel like a coward. Can you post one receipt? Stop it. Stop it, sir. Yeah. Can you, can you help your people back in Germany? They don't need help. They're doing sufficiently fine. No, they're not. No, they're not. So there's meth and drug use and HIV rampant over there in your motherland, sir. You should help them instead of worrying about Foundation of Black Americans. And you should thank Foundation of Black Americans to give you a place that you could flee to. Because we damn sure weren't fleeing to Germany. You should, you should back up what you're saying with documents. You should back up from running and go back and help your motherland, sir. Help your proud, your proud sure, motherland, sir. Help your motherland. Go on Stop Google. Whining. I'm talking about your ass, man. Sir, what would you say, sir? Go ahead. Said, go on you? Google. We're the top leading economic country in the European Union. We don't need help. Uh, yes, you do. Google German slums. Google yeah, German right. HIV rate. It's lower than, it's lower than uh, Louisiana. And by the way... Why, by the way, you sound Somali, dude, to be honest. You know, you kind Somali. Of sound Somali. Are you really Somali? No, I'm German, man. I no, don't no, have... no, 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 no. Because I noticed I'm your accent. Sure. I'm not you. I don't have to lie. You know no, I mean? no, 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 no. You are lying. You're not even German. 
because right. my, my my guy who's over there in, in East Africa now he just texts me he's listening he said your your accent that that dude is Somalian I can tell the accent and I knew your accent sounded kind All of right. po- post post that you're not you're not you're not German right. you want to be white man you're yeah. not even white you'll want to be you're a liar bro that's it you'll want to be that that's the Somalian accent you got you will want to be you over there on a the camel right now you ain't oh, no this guy man. You riding, you rode your camel, dude. You ain't no damn German. You wanna be? Can you post one receipt? What Can you, you post talking? post post that you aren't Somalian? I'm not Somali, but I don't have to. You lying? Okay. You ain't. That's not a German accent you have. Nope, the Germans not a Somali <laughs> accent. Either. Yes, it is. Yeah, you got a Somalian accent. You're not even German. You a wanna be? I actually have an African American accent. No, you don't. That's I'm, I'm a foundation of Black American. We don't talk like you. You thought I was African American. I did. I did. I did. No, 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 no. Hold on. I knew Re- you weren't a Black American. You were not a Black Re- American. Re- 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 you- what did you think I was when I first came on? A, a, a foreigner, a Black foreigner, which is what you are. You're not a foundation of Black <laughs> American. I'm a foundation of Black American. Everybody in this room know your accent is not no foundation of Black American accent. You over there looking like a Somali pirate dude trying to be white. You want to be white. All right, man. I'm not here to go back and forth. Yeah, 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 yeah. You You know, you can't provide one receipt. Dude, you up here pretending to be a German white man. How pathetic is that? A mansion in Atlanta. How pathetic is that? Now you're trying to troll your way out of it. You are a big, dark African brother up here trying to be a white man. That's sad. Ain't that pathetic, bro? This guy, man. (laughs) Ha, 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 hell. Get some pride in yourself and stop sitting up here trying to be white. You ain't white and you'll never be white. He's probably sitting over there with some damn cake soap on up here pretending to be a white German man. You should you 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 should be ashamed you're embarrassing you're embarrassing your somali homeland sir can you post one receipt sir can you post sir can you post your hyena can you do that and stop playing and stop pretending to be a white man you're not a white man this guy, man. You'll probably, you probably you were probably you were pro- listen you were probably an exchange student up there in germany so you're running around here talking about you German. You ain't German, dude. You are not a white man. Full oh. German. I'm full German. No, you're not. No, you're not. I'm in Zygburg, Germany. No, I, you're not. No, right. you're not. What are you talking about? No, you're not. Sir, no, you're not. I hear a meerkat in the background. You're not German. I hear you. You're not even. There's no meerkats in the background. I'm in a house in Minnesota. No, you're not. No, you're not. I hear, I hear meerkats barking or whatever they do. I hear meerkat barking. Right. I'm in America right now. What are you talking about? Meerkat? No. Sir. But don't sit here and pretend to be a white man. That's so disgraceful. Have more pride in yourself than that, brother. I know you had to flee your homeland, but don't sit here and fantasize about being a white Clean man. Clean those receipts. Back up what you're saying, man. Stop fantasizing about being a white man, sir. Post the receipt. That's all you gotta do, man. Post post they, the picture, post they, your forehead. Post, post a picture of your forehead, sir, so we can see what's going on. Post your forehead, sir. Post your receipt, man. Okay. Anyway, um, assalamu alaikum, brother. This guy's a fraud, man. He's a fraud. Okay. Uh, there you go, projecting, sir. You can't this, post your receipt. Blame this, it. this is a dude who's pretending to be white, calling somebody That's a fraud. All right. All right. There we go. Go ahead and enjoy your injera. Yeah, that accent is not German. It's not a German accent. Talking about. He live around black folks. Black folks, uh, foundational black Americans don't sound like that. Let's be very clear. These people think that they can run a, ram- a whammy bammy on us. They think that they're slick. With these fake accents and all of that stuff. No, we don't sound like that. You sound like a Somalian guy trying to sound black. You see? All right, let me get one more call here. There's a lot of folks in here. Damn, we got 1,400 people in here. We got a lot of folks in here. All right, where we are? Let's raise your hand if you want to get on. Raise your hand if you want to get on, ladies and gentlemen. All right, because I can't be on here too late. I got to film in the morning. Uh, let's get Athena in here. Athena raised her hand. Athena, how are you? 
Athena, let's turn your microphone on, ma'am. Athena, you raised your hand, beloved. So you have to have that microphone ready. You got to unmute your microphone, Athena. Athena? Oh, you are you using an earpiece, Athena? Come on, Athena. Hello? Uh, hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, Athena. You can hear me now? Can Can everyone hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. I just have a question, like a quick question to, you know, everybody, including you. Um, how does everyone feel comfortable having a homosexual guide them with the... Ma'am, Athena, are you about to project, Athena? Athena, because your phone is janky, so that means you're non-FBA. Sounds like you're about to start projecting about your family. Now, what are you about to project, Athena? Go ahead, ma'am. You're about to start projecting and trolling, Athena. I can tell by the janky phone, the fact that your phone was hella janky. We knew you were non-FBA. So, Athena, you about to start trolling? Athena? It's a real question. Okay, we didn't we didn't hear your question, but it sounds like you're about to start projecting and trolling, ma'am. Are you going to prove us right by trolling? Because trolling proves that we're right. Why are you against Africans? Why are you so anti- Stop. That's you trying to give yourself unwarranted significance. Let's stop it. You're trying to give yourself unwarranted significance, ma'am. Why would I be against you, ma'am, and your phone don't even work correctly? Why would I be against you or anybody be against you? You're out of sight, out of mind. You're calling up trolling and trying to center yourself. So the question is, why are you so jealous of foundational black Americans where you have to try to center yourself in our conversations? No, no, you need to answer my question. Re-listen. Ma'am, where are you from? Here. Why are you so... Okay, let's try it again. Because I know a lot of you are ashamed of your homelands. Where's your family from? Where did y'all immigrate from, ma'am? Y'all stop being ashamed of where you came from. Athena, where did y'all immigrate from? I just need to know. Why? Where did you immigrate from, ma'am? Athena, wherever you immigrated from, obviously the phone service is very bad and you brought your janky phone with you. Now, where did you and your family immigrate from, Athena? You can't even get your phone together. And if you can't even get your phone together, how are you going to get your homeland together? You got to fix your homeland, ma'am. Coming over here whining and trolling, that's not going to make it better. Athena? She's still struggling with her phone. Ma'am, it's so sad that you can't even troll correctly. You can't even troll correctly because your phone is so janky. That's bad. You're, you're failing at trolling because your phone is so raggedy. That's sad. That is absolutely pathetic. Well, your phone is too raggedy for you to troll. Athena? Now, Athena, you're... you're okay, that accent... Is Ethiopian. Somebody just texted me who's over there. They said your accent is Ethiopian. So you Ethiopian, Athena. Athena. And by the way, I'm not muting her. His, her janky flip phone is acting up. But Athena, hello. Yeah, my man, that's the, the Chinese internet over there that they say that's just not working correctly. Athena. Athena, did you get your phone together, ma'am? Can you hear me? Okay. Well, are you good? You got your phone together? You got that internet working over there, Athena? And the generator's working? It's working now. It's running just for you to answer there this. You, there you go. Okay. Now, Athena, I'm not muting her. Okay, her phone is... Athena, how about this? I give you a chance to go get a better phone to troll with. 
because this is kind of sad. You thought you were going to call up trolling, but your phone is so raggedy and janky, you weren't able to even communicate your trolling correctly. So kind of proves our point there, doesn't it, Athena, that y'all kind of got to get it together over there back home, Athena. Athena, and you're just rummaging around with your phone. Okay, let me get some more people on here, Athena. Okay, because I don't want to hear a struggle phone throughout the broadcast. Okay. All right. And by the way, everybody, well, we got 1,500 people in here. We have a lot of people in here. Wow. Look at all these people in here. And by the way, my book, Foundational Black American Race Beta, are available now. You can get that, Foundational Black American Race Beta, available right now. All right, let's get some more. Raise your hand if you want to get on. And please, if you are trying to get on, please do not have a janky phone. At least have a phone that works correctly. All right, let's get um, the... No knowledge, I think that's his name. Let's get him on. Hey, sir, how are you? Yo, Tariq Nashi. Yo, uh, my name is uh, Kareem. I go by Know It All. I'm a rapper, but uh, I'm from New York City. I just wanted to say thank you for the uh, the Hidden Colors films. I don't. I'm not really too too familiar with your other ventures, but those yeah. have really opened my mind to start looking for my own type of alternative information. So yeah, I just want to thank you for that. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you, my brother. Much respect right. to you. Shout out to that brother. All right. Okay. Shout out to that. Um, by the way, y'all need to be following me on my YouTube channel. That's Tariq Radio. That is my YouTube channel, Tariq Radio. Let's get, um, let's see. We've got a lot of folks in here. Let's get, uh, um, let's get this lovely sister, Sabari Queen. Let's get FBA sister in here, Sabari Queen. Let's hear from the FBA family. Hey, hey, how are you, beloved? I'm doing well. I just have a question. Well, first of all, thank you for everything you do. But I have a question. It, since we differentiate ourselves from non-FBA people, right? And they're butthurt about it. But why? Because nothing, even if we said, you know, I can look at you, tell you not FBA, they can still come over here and get everything they want from white supremacists and from coons. So what is actually the problem? A good question. Thank you for that. I mean, let me answer that. See, the problem is all of these groups are so used and not just the, the people in the African and Caribbean diaspora, just two other Latino groups, Asian groups, Arab groups, all of these groups, they're so used to the foundation of black Americans upholding this minority coalition and looking at ourselves as just another people of color group or minority group that everybody can join in with and get resources from while we do all the fighting and everybody just kind of coast through. When we say, okay, what we're doing, we're designating our own group. We're understanding our own lineage and that's exclusionary. So when we get resources now, we're going to get resources that exclude all of these other groups. So now everybody wants to cry foul because they've been getting a free ride of all, off of us for so long. They've been eating a free lunch off of us for the last 60 years. So now it's like, hey, 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 why are y'all doing this now? When is this going to end? Notice you always have people ask that question. What's the end game? Ain't no end game. We're going to have to start looking out for tangible resources for foundational black Americans. It's just that simple. So all of that xenophobic projection, but that's, that's a projection. They're projecting their own anti-FBA xenophobia. These people are so xenophobic towards us. It's ridiculous. So they like to come in and promote and project um, their own hatred towards foundational black Americans. As you see, when you talk to people, listen to them. Y'all, you you have been in these spaces and you've heard how they talk about us. These people talk about us crazy. And they've always been doing that. Not all of them. Let's just be clear. Not all of them. Because we, as you've heard, we have some brothers and sisters who are from the diaspora, who are immigrants or whatever. And they're very respectful. You do have a lot who are respectful. But the ones who are not, they own something else. And nobody's checking them. See, that's the problem. 
Nobody's checking that tether class that that sit up here and have all that vitriol towards us. Nobody's checking them, but we're checking them. And because they have not been checked, oh, it's like all hell is breaking loose. Let's see who we got here. We got a lot of folks still in here. I get one more call. Let me make it a good one. Let's get one more. Who is this person here? Um, all right. Oh, 88 Ranger. Let's get this person. All right. Let's get this person. 88 Ranger. With the number 88. Hey, Tariq, man. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, just want to say I uh, appreciate what the work that you do, especially on Hidden Colors. Yes. Sir. Uh, yeah. I guess my I have a few questions, but I don't know if this is, if we have the time for that. But um, my first question is like, uh, like, wh- how would we would determine who is an FBA, or how do we trace back the timeline to see where the FBA came from, or something like that? Yeah, and I've talked about this. Oh, many I'm sorry, times. my bad. What you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've talked about this before. If you can trace your lineage back to the 1870 census, your FBA is that simple. That's when they started really documenting and putting uh, foundational black Americans on the census forms. So the census forms are, you know, you can get those, you can access those anywhere. So that's a nationwide thing. That was a nationwide thing at the time. So if you can trace your lineage back to those 1870 census forms, you're a foundational black American. Easy, very easy. It's not as hard as people make it seem. It's very easy. It's very easy to trace where we came from, trace the lineage back. It's very, very easy to do so. So that's that's the the main thing. But anyway, thank you for the call, brother. Uh, no problem. Right. Thank you. Yeah, we know who we are. We know who Foundational Black Americans are, and other groups know who we are too. Yeah. All right, let's get this person here. Okay. All right, let's get um Shama B- Shamali Blues. All right, let's get Shamali Blues here. Shamali Blues. All right. Um, hello. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you a question. So I heard you say a couple of times that um, FBAs and non-FBAs have a different understanding of white supremacy. Can you please explain on that? I'm not trying to argue anything. I just want to see what your right. perspective on that is. Yeah, great. And that's a very good question. Very good question. Um, by the way, where are you from? I'm uh, from Sudan, but I live in the U.S., born and raised here they, in the DMV. Great, great. Go, got it. So, yeah, when I say we have a different understanding of the white supremacists than a lot of people from the the diaspora, um, we understand we live in the belly of the beast. We live right by these white supremacists. So we know how they operate and we understand the core of their values. And generally, foundational black Americans, we try to distance ourselves from them when we're trying to build things because they've destroyed so many things that we've built. So we know they get down. So with foundational black Americans, we try to, if we can, we try to have as much minimal contact with white supremacists as possible. When we try to get stuff going, we try to our best to have them out of our mix as much as possible because we know we can get more things done without the white supremacists meddling in our businesses. Um, For example, um, Tulsa, Oklahoma, when black folks were in Tulsa, white people were in Oklahoma as well, but they just kind of ignored the black people, which was just what they wanted. And when they ignored black people, they built things like the black wall street. When we don't have the white supremacists right on our backs, we actually get more done. So we try to avoid them to a certain degree. And we know that we have to fight the white supremacists in order to get justice. We have to take it directly to them. This is why when you see protests and you see uprisings in this country, it's foundational black Americans putting in that work all throughout history in America. Now, other groups, when they have issues, those issues are still orchestrated by the white supremacists. But what they do, they put a lot of black puppets out there in the forefront. So you're seeing a black face on it. They know how to go in and exploit tribal groups in the diaspora. And when white people show up, they come as saviors and people who are going to help the situation that they created. And a lot of people in the diaspora, they don't look at that white person as a negative. They look at a white person showing up as hell. Jesus arrived. That's why over there in Africa, you got all of these people with big statues. They put statues of white Jesus up all over the place. I saw so many white Jesus pictures and statues in Africa. It's ridiculous. So they look at white people differently than we do. Over in the diaspora, they see white person. They think, okay, this person is bringing resources and food and stuff that I need. They're about to adopt me. So they look at the white person as a savior to a certain degree. And we don't. 
That's the major difference. So when they come over here, they're not about to challenge white supremacy at all. That's why a lot of the, the fighting and the protesting and all of the stuff that goes on over here, it's really us in the forefront of that. And the white supremacists know how to get non-FBA people to be buffers to actually work against us. Because whenever we try to get something going on, it's a lot of non-FBA people putting the cape on for the white supremacists. You know, and that's a major problem. That makes sense, bro? Yeah, it makes sense. But, I mean, you can't, you can't ignore that there was um, struggles against white colonization in Africa during the 1950s. Of course. There was. And yeah, we were co-signing that. We were all on that. There was some some fights against colonialism. Yes, there was. And and foundational black Americans were trying to link up with the brothers and sisters over there. Patrice Lumumba, uh, all of those folks. We were right on the same page. Dr. King went over there and said, hey, their struggle is our struggle. And in the early 60s, when they sent Kenyan students over here, it was Dr. King and Foundation of Black Americans raising money on the grassroots to help educate those Kenyans so they can go over there and educate the brothers and sisters there so we can get something going on as a global African Black Foundation of Black American com- camaraderie group. So early on, the whole notion was that we as Foundation of Black Americans, we're going to fight to help get some African and Caribbean brothers and sisters here so that they can be reinforcement for us to fight white supremacy. Okay. That was the reason why we were on our black power thing. We were talking about African pride. We were real big on that in the 1960s, all through the seventies and even up up until now, up until very recently, but let's be very real. You do admit that that's been kind of one-sided over there. Y'all haven't been on that, have you? Not really. Exactly. And that, sir, is the problem. And it can't be. You can't have a one-sided coalition. You can't have us over here talking about, yeah, stand up to the motherland, black man, motherland, African brothers and sisters, yeah, pan-Africanism, woo woo woo. And then over there, y'all talking about Jareers and Abids and Akatas and all uh, it, it, that. It can't work like that, bro. It just don't work like that. Are you feel me? Yeah, I can understand your point now. There you go. Thank you so much, sir. All right. So, yeah, at least least my man understood where I was coming from, and he was honest. I respect his honesty. He knew. He's like, yeah, we we ain't really trying to rock with y'all like that, which is real. Now, this is them saying this. Now, this ain't me. Y'all can't say that we're being divisive. This is a brother from from Sudan. Yeah. Now, when people tell the truth, they tell the truth. They're They're not trying to get that movement going. Let's be clear. They're, they're just not. It's been one-sided. I mean, we've been up here trying to connect with folks and raise people up and fight for them and all the. And it's been one-sided. And not only is it one-sided, the a lot of the people have contempt for foundational Black Americans. Yeah, a lot of people have contempt for us. And that's why we're saying, hey, enough is enough. We can't sit here and pretend that there's some type of pan-Africanism coalition going on and you have people with just utter contempt for us. We we just can't. We're not doing that. And again, these conversations are courtesy conversations because calling it out, it doesn't harm us in any way because nobody's giving us anything to, to take from us. You understand? Because we don't benefit from anything. We don't benefit from this one sided coalition. We have no benefit. So we don't have to sit down and talk with anybody about anything. These are courtesy conversations. I always say this. And really, this is for me to let the Foundation of Black American Family understand what's really going on out here. This is what these conversations are really about. And some of the non-FBA riders, if you want to ride, just continue to ride out. But I'm, I'm letting the FBA family know that. This is what a lot of folks, if you listen to them, this is really what their get down is when it comes to us. And it's not really beneficial if we're going to be real about it. So we got to be honest about certain things. Because, see, we can't sit here and try to fight systematic white supremacy and you got somebody looking like us trying to undermine us. And we see these people who keep trying to undermine us. And when we do background checks on them, nine times out of ten, they're not even FBA. That's a problem. But anyway, y'all. We've had a great conversation tonight. 
I hope we've learned some things. I hope people learn some things because I try to make these things educational. See what I, you notice what I don't do. I don't let this turn into troll fest. You see, we, we bring truth to power. I don't let people come in here trolling to waste time. Cause that's another thing that a lot of people like to do.